He rules the world with a staff and a rod. We're a team, me and God. Good morning and good day to you, brothers and sisters. This lesson, we're going to talk about what in the world did Jesus mean by 70 times 7. Jesus said it. What does it mean? 70 times 7. I really think you're going to get a much better understanding of what he meant by that in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, he starts off talking about forgiveness and how important that is. Okay, we're going to read scripture. We're going to be in Matthew, Daniel, Revelation, and Micah chapter 4. But we're going to start off talking about something no one likes to talk about. But the Bible makes it very clear that if your sins are not washed away at the time of your individual end, which is your death, you are going to be delivered to the torturers. Is Jesus going to walk you to the torturers? No, but Father is going to turn you over to the torturers. In fact, that's what Jesus calls these angels. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not selling anything. I'm telling you what Father is warning you about through Jesus. Jesus spoke these in red letters. All right, we, we think we know a little bit about the lake of fire and brimstone. You know, is it where your soul goes to be destroyed when Father decides you're not somebody he wants to hang around with for trillions of years? Um, is Do we suffer in the lake of fire and brimstone? We're going to answer that in this lesson. Who suffers for how long? And what's some of the things that determine how long you are going to be tortured? Are you raised from the dead so you can stand on the day of your trial? In other words, it's not you, just your soul floating around the room and Father says, all right, Let's destroy this soul. We're done with it. You wish it was like that. But if Jesus has not hid your sins from Father, you are going to be de you are going to be tortured before you are destroyed. You will be brought back to life in a glorified body to face the trial, the court, the courtroom. Father is the final judge. Um but the 70 times 7 is not a number that Jesus made up when the disciples were asking him about how many times do I need to forgive my brother, talking about brethren, actually to be more specific, he's talking about brethren who uh, are of the household of God, also called the household of faith. How many times do I got to put up with being wronged? before you're going to do something, Father, because if you're not going to do something about this brother that keeps wronging me, then you need to let me handle it, and I'm going to straighten him out. Jesus says, and we're going to read it here in Matthew 18, you got to forgive him 70 times, 7 times. What does that mean? Is it just a number that Jesus made up, meaning, you know, you know what? You always got to forgive him no matter what. No matter how many times, don't even keep count. No, that's not what Jesus meant. He meant something specific. Seventy times seven should mean something to those who have read the entire book of Daniel. It has a specific meaning. All right, let's get into Father's Word. Uh, Holy Spirit, please, please be with us while we read Scripture here today. We're going to start out in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, and read through the end of the chapter of, of 18. Here we go. Then Peter came to him and said, him, capital H, I know it's hard to see on my Bible, have your Bibles opened. Uh, I love the New King James Version. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall brother sin against me, I and I forgive him, up to seven times? Jesus said to him, Peter, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. 
This certain king in Matthew 18 that Jesus is referring to, even though he didn't make it capitalized, is the same certain king that Jesus refers to in Matthew chapter 20. This is Father. Don't let it fool you. He's talking about our Creator, our Heavenly Father. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. With his servants. And when he had begun to settle <coughs> accounts, one was brought to him which owed him 10,000 talents. Okay, settle accounts means the great white throne judgment you read at the end of uh, the book of Revelation, which we all have to face. But it's going to be a very happy day if you're already glorified or if you get your glorified that body because Father has decided you're one that shall spend eternity with him. But if you're one of the majority of people, it's not going to be a good day. One was brought to him which owed him 10,000 talents. Why did he owe him 10,000 talents? This is talking about sin. And Father lists what he considers sin all throughout the Bible. You need to pay attention to it. When somebody tells you it's okay to, to commit a terrible sinful act, you need to go to the Word and see if that's on the list of things that Father's going to hold you accountable for and torture you for when the time comes. You need to look for yourself. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust a preacher. Don't trust somebody out in California. Read it for yourself. All right, verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. At the great white throne judgment, you're going to pay what, what you owe, unless you plead the blood of Jesus and you are saved. Okay, there's more to it than that. There is more to it than that. We discussed that in many other lessons. I don't want to get deep into to salvation and how to be saved right now. But it is something we need to talk about a lot. People need to understand how to have your sins washed away. But it takes more than just a sentence or two to talk about salvation because salvation uh, can be taken away from you. John chapter 15 verses 1 and 2. Father's looking for certain things because your salvation is a covenant. It is a contract. It is a deal. You have agreed to labor in his vineyard. You cannot just be hearers of the word. You must be doers of the word. All right. That's for another lesson. 26. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. Okay, did you catch what's happened so far? Here's a guy who... Uh, he owed money and he can't make payment but now he's going to go get somebody under him who owes him money but he's not going to forgive him when he says I, I don't have the money he says oh you're going to pay me one way or another but yet he was begging forgiveness from the one that he owed money to are you catching on All right. grabbed him by the throat saying pay me what you owe Verse 29, so his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he who would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servant saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Came and told the master all that they had witnessed. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. 
Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you, do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Here at the this is the end of Matthew 18. Here we see the lesson at the very end that Jesus was trying to, to actually explain to you what he was talking about. We're talking about trespasses. In other words, when you wrong somebody, you've trespassed against them. All right, your heavenly Father will do to you if each of you from his heart, from your heart, we didn't say, well, you know what? I'm not demand payment from this guy who's did me wrong because uh, I read Matthew 18, so you know I don't want to get hurt. So you know, just be safe. I'm not going to demand payment. I'll leave it alone. No, it says from your heart. If your earthly brother and sister, or your cousin, or your neighbor or somebody does you wrong in other words they trespass against you we're not talking about owe you money we're talking about they they've done something wrong to you they may have even killed a family member of yours he says forgive them from your heart not just go to the judge and say all right cancel all charges that's not good enough you gotta not only do that he says you gotta forgive them from your heart now I gotta be careful. I'm not saying they shouldn't do spend the rest of their days in jail. I'm not saying that. If it sounded like it was, let me correct that. Okay. You if you can't live amongst humans and treat people like humans, and you go around torturing and killing and you're sick and you're possessed or whatever, you gotta be separated. But as far as torture goes, as far as torture goes, depends on what you call torture, as far as torture goes, you leave that up to Father. Did you catch what I said? Father will torture them if they deserve to be tortured. But because there's unclean spirits around every corner, demons, I mean, you don't know, I don't know, only Father knows what that person's been through, what's going on in their brain, which is sick and diseased and, and could be full of evil spirits. You don't know. You let the torturing be done by the torturing angels. Father will make that call. But you don't have to worry, okay, that they're not going to have their day in court. They're going to have their day in court. Father's got recordings. He not only has vo voice recordings, he's got video recordings, he's got what's going on in their mind recordings. All right? Don't worry about that. But don't wish that somebody gets what's due them when you're begging Father not to give you what's due you. Does that make sense? So, the great white throne judgment. All right? If your sins aren't washed away, and you're standing there in your glorified body, you've been raised from the dead at the second resurrection, one of the main things Father's going to look at, okay, you're going to give an account for your sins, if your sins aren't washed away. But Father's going to look, he's going to take a close look at it. Are you a forgiving person? Has people done you wrong? and you in your heart forgave them. If not, that's one of the main things he's going to look at as far as the degree of torture you're going to receive to pay for the trespasses. And then your soul is going to be destroyed. When we go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, we're also going to flip to, what is it, Revelation 20 or 21 when it talks about you will have your part in the lake of fire based on what? Based on your sins and primarily based on this right here. This right here is going to determine how long you suffer 
as well as how many transgressions you have against you. So, does that mean we suffer for trillions of years? No. You're going to have your part and then you're going to be destroyed. I'll show you in Revelation when we get there. But, the Bible also says in the book of Revelation that during the last three and a half years before Jesus returns, the devil himself will be cast to earth. Alright? And those who worship him by taking the mark and the oath that they think he is the Messiah who has come, they think he is God, those who are drawn to him and take his oath and worship him, they will suffer forever. Did you catch that? It's in Father's Word in the book of Revelation. They will suffer forever. Everyone else, you're going to suffer based on your transgressions, your sins, but the degree, the temperature, the amount of torture, not just the length, is going to be determined by how forgiving are you to those who sin against you. But this lesson is about 70 times 7. We saw that in verse 22 of Matthew 18. Jesus said to him, Peter, I did not say to you up to seven times, as far as how many times you got to forgive your brother. It says, but up to 70 times 7. Jesus did not mean 490 times. He didn't mean a bunch. That's 70 times 7. When you go back to Daniel, you see what he's talking about. Okay, forgive me. I got to take a sip of coffee. I feel like Chuck, uh, not Chuck, Paul Begley. What? It's early. All right, let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter, I think it's 9. Let's see. <clears throat> what does this 70 times 7 means that Jesus is talking about Peter in Matthew 18? Here we go. It's something called the prophecy of 70 weeks. It starts right here in Daniel 9, verse 24, the prophecy of 70 weeks. The angel Gabriel has been sent to the prophet Daniel and to make him understand God's plan as far as the nation of Israel and the rest of the humans on the planet who are all involved. All right, let's go ahead and read Daniel 9, verses 24, to the end of the chapter, verse 27. Here we go. What did Jesus mean by 70 times 7? 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, finish sins, sinning against God, to make an end of sins. To make an end of sins. How can we make an end of sins unless Lucifer, also known as Leviathan, serpent, dragon, Satan, the devil, how can we make an end of sins unless he reaches his end? He has to come to his end. And guess what? At the end of the 70th week, Lucifer will stop causing you to sin because he is going to be handcuffed and bound and thrown into the pit for a thousand years while Jesus reigns on earth things are going to be wonderful all right then at the end of the thousand years Satan will be released for a few days or months stir up trouble again and then Satan will be finally destroyed as if he never existed why is he released for a short time at the end of the thousand years? Because before we transition from Jesus' rulership at the end of that thousand period to, to eternity, when Father is with us, besides the Lamb, Jesus, when we make that transition, there's one last sifting that has to be done so we can identify the bad apples before we move into eternity. But that's what that means, to make an end of sin, 70 weeks. What's 70 weeks? Is it 70 times 7 days for 490 days? No. That's not what that means. Okay. 
what it means is 70 times 7 years so it's not 490 days but it's also not a to it's a total of 490 years but not all at one time you'll see what I mean to finish the transgression to make an end of sins remember transgression is what Matthew 18 is talking about 70 times 7 in other words we're gonna finish this <laughs> this chapter 9 but to make an end of sins in other words you're gonna forgive your brother until until the end of sin has come in other words until Lucifer is bound and handcuffed did you catch that until Lucifer is handcuffed and people don't sin anymore until that happens you're gonna keep forgiving your brother until the end of sins has come to make reconciliation for iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy who is the most holy as far as living beings it's Jesus he was anointed as the most holy know therefore and understand in other words listen up because this is the clue to everything that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince in other words until Jesus is born of woman all right and comes on this earth until then from the time the command went forth to build Jerusalem to restore it until Jesus the Messiah in other words Jews who aren't Christians would would truly read this and understand it they can actually determine from the time the command went out to restore Jerusalem until Jesus showed up on the scene there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks that means 69 times seven years okay get your calculators out they're telling Israel, your Messiah is going to show up in that amount of time from the time the decree went out to restore and, and build Jerusalem. I mean, there should be no doubt who their Messiah is. But you'll get Jews. I mean, they'll manipulate those verses and, and calendars and they'll calculate it and go, nope, nope, you're off by a few years. Couldn't have been him. That must not me mean what this... Uh, uh, chapter says oh yeah it does my Israeli brothers it does to restore build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times after the 62 weeks in other words after the seven weeks after the 62 more weeks for a total of 69 the Messiah shall be cut off. So the Messiah comes, he lives, he preaches, and he is killed for our sins. Okay, but we know that he is resurrected and eventually, I think, what, 40 days later, ascends to heaven. The Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself and for the people of the prince who is to come. shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end of it shall be with flood until the end of war desolations are determined so father who's not the author of confusion but he does put out stumbling blocks from time to time he has his reasons all right father allowed the events of ad what was it 66 to ad 70 to occur so people think and the sanctuary was destroyed people think that shouldn't um that sh shouldn't that have been when the end of the world happened no and i'm going to prove to you know hosea 6 2. <coughs> father's plan all along was after these 69 times seven years ended and Jesus was killed resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven all right the Bible says 
Let me adjust my camera here. So we can Right, I'm wearing a suit for this presentation. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus will not return to earth to rule until 2,000 years following his ascension. So what's my point? You have 69 times 7 years from the time the decree goes out to restore Jerusalem and, and rebuild the city to the time Jesus is, comes. He's cut off, but not for himself. He's cut off for his brethren. He paid the price. But there's going to be a 2,000 year period after he ascended until he returned. And then we have the 70th seven year period. The last days, the latter days, the 70th week. So we had seven weeks or seven years. We had 62 weeks or 62 times seven years. Jesus was cut off, raised from the dead. Hosea 6.2, we got to wait 2,000 years, and then he will return. Yes, I'm going to take you there. We'll finish uh, Daniel 9. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The he is not capitalized. This is the Antichrist. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. What does covenant mean? It means a contract. It means a deal. One week means seven years. So in other words, for that last 70th week, which is a period of seven years, after that ends, there'll be the end of sin has come. And the man of perdition will be in handcuffs. Lucifer. You with me? There'll be a deal made by the Antichrist himself. Is the Antichrist um, controlled by Lucifer? Is Lucifer inside of him? Not for the entire seven years. But the last three and a half years, the last seven years, Lucifer is cast to earth and he will completely overtake his mind and body. But look what it says. But in the middle of the week, the last seven year period, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Is it capital H? Yeah, but only because it starts the sentence. It's still the Antichrist. He shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Okay, the, the daily sacrifices will be stopped by the Antichrist at the fifth seal, not the sixth seal. Do we know that? Well, you see that in Daniel chapter 11. It matches fifth seal of the book of Revelation perfectly. The poor who understand and watch, people of understanding, are beheaded because they're telling everybody in Israel this is the guy the Bible has been warning us about and they the majority of Israel think it is their long-awaited Messiah at first all right in the middle of the week in the middle of that seven-year period he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate even until the consummation which is determined by God is poured out on the desolate. In other words, vengeance and judgment is going to be poured out on Israel. Father is going to use this Antichrist for these long years, especially the last three and a half years. He's going to use him as the rod of his indignation to spank his children and just about completely wipe them out. And then he takes the bolt the last 45 days of the last seven year period and then he starts beating uh, Lucifer's army with it and the cup passes back to the Muslims and then they get wiped out okay that's in my other videos please see them but what we saw here in Daniel 9 is what Jesus meant in Matthew 18 about why you need to forgive your brother 70 times 7. In other words, until the end of sins has come, when Lucifer is put in handcuffs, you've got to forgive your brother that long. But before we go to Revelation, I promised you Hosea 6-2, in case you're not familiar with it. 
All right, it's very close to the book of Daniel. In fact, it is the next book in the Bible following Daniel. Turn to Hosea 6, 2. You'll see what I meant when I said Jesus told us, Father's Word told, told us, that Jesus will be back in 2,000 years after he has left us. We'll start with verse 1. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. This is talking about the last days. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. In other words, Jesus will return to them when they return to him and recognize Jesus as the Messiah. But for those last three and a half years of the last seven years, God himself is going to be administering his wrath against his people. But catch verse 2 here in Hosea 6. After two days, he, Jesus, will revive us. Do you know what that means? On the third day, he will raise us up from the dead that we may live, literally brought back to life, and live in his sight or in his presence. Oh, that's not what he meant here. He was talking about just Jesus defeating death. Oh, no, this is exactly what he meant. Should we fault people who lived a thousand years ago for understanding that? No. But you, brethren, who live in the year 2015, who can watch CNN and Fox News every night and see what's going on in the Middle East, and it's been 2,000 years, and you see the lawlessness that's coming, you should understand what Hosea 6.2 has meant the entire time. And nobody's caught it over the last 2,000 years. After two days, we know that a day uh, with the Lord has is as a thousand years we see that in two different places in scripture after two thousand years he will revive us jesus in person on the third day now does it say at the exact moment we start the third day does it word it like that no it doesn't i'll admit it it doesn't say at the start of the third day and it does not say after three days but it, the way it's worded is on the third day, which I believe he means, uh, I believe he means exactly 2,000 years. I could be mistaken. Maybe he meant near 2,000 years. That's possible. Only Father knows for sure. But I believe that he told us 2,000 years the entire time. After 2,000 years, Jesus will revive us I believe it, you can say, on the start of the third day. On the start of the, remember, the third day is the thousand year reign of Christ. On that third day, he will raise us up. So you could think of the seventh bowl, which is the last day of the age. You could think of it as the last day of the age or the start of the third day millennium, however you want to look at it. He will raise us up that we may live in our glorified body in his presence up there on that storm cloud on the sea of glass. Ah, man, he told us the whole time. The problem is no one knows when Jesus ascended. Nobody knows for sure. Nobody can even name the year for sure. Well, we know he was born before King Herod died, but people can't even say for sure when King Herod died. Some people say 4 B.C., some people say 1 B.C., was Jesus six months old when Herod died? Was Jesus two years old when Herod died? And don't get confused in your studies because King Herod had a son. Guess what he called him? King Herod. So don't get confused. There's two Herods. Um, but I wanted to show you that in Hosea 6 too. That's why there's a break between the 69th seven-year period and the 70th seven-year period. You with me? Why did Father do that? Did you ever think that he wants to fill his mansion with glorified bodies, people just like you? Maybe he didn't have enough. Back in 15 AD or 18 AD or 25 AD, whenever Jesus died and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, maybe there just wasn't enough children. Father desires to have a big family, the household of God. 
He wanted 2,000 years of babies being born and tested on this earth and, and souls that were born of the free woman before the foundations of the world. He wanted them to, to get a chance to be manifested in a living human body. Because if you don't live, you don't get a reward. He enjoys giving gifts to his children. He loves to give you that trophy, that blue ribbon. He loves it. He loves to go to your sporting events. That's what life is. The soul gets placed in a living body and father gets to cheer his children on. Why would you deny him 2,000 years of that? He enjoys it. But guess what? The 2,000 years are about up. And he's about got enough children. Now, are people going to be born on the third day, that 1,000 year reign of Christ, when he's the ruler, and we come back in our glorified bodies, those who are, of us who are in Christ, and rule with him on this planet, are there going to be man of dust, babies being born? Yes, it'll be the greatest nursery of all time. So, no, he's not done growing his family yet. Not till that 1,000 years is over. He wants a lot of family members in his household. Now, see, we looked at Matthew 18, Daniel 9, Hosea. Let's go to Revelation 12. Let's look at Jesus and his army and his children and his angels. Actually, his children's here. His fellow angels are going to be cast to earth during that 70th week. Did you know that? The devil is coming soon. Well, aren't there demons and unclean spirits here now? Forgive me for this. Yes, they're here now. Let's go to Revelation 12. But Lucifer himself, along with the angels, the fallen angels, are about to be cast out of heaven. All right, let's look at uh, Revelation 12, starting with verse 7. We're going to read from 7 down to verse 13. All right. Revelation 12, 7 through 13. Read your own Bibles. You can't read mine. Um, follow along. Verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Okay, there's a war going on in heaven these last three and a half years. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon, this is the devil, was cast out of heaven, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. And he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, he's coming. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Okay, let's not read over this stuff too fast. You need to get this. What you've just been told as he, even though the evil spirits and demonic spirits and unclean spirits, even though they're here and been here the whole time roaming the earth, all right, testing you, free woman souls put into human bodies to be tested so Father can find the seeds that were cast by Jesus so he can find his true children. You Eventually, sometime in your life, you will manifest into what you were really meant to be and they get to see who's who. Well, here we have the devil and his angels being cast down to earth for the last three and a half years. The last half of the 70th seven. What happens? It says, The accuser of our brethren has been cast down. In other words, this is what the devil has been doing the whole time he's been before Father's throne. Watching you. And writing down every bad thing you've ever done or thought. You with me? And he's, look, Lord, I hope you remember this. When when your baby's day comes in court, I better see this 
Father, you're righteous, right? You better put this on the, as evidence. Submit this as evidence, Lord. That's what the devil's saying. Uh, I want this submitted as evidence against Joe Snuffy on the day of his trial. Since you think I'm so terrible and this is the one you love, you better submit this as evidence. I mean, he's accusing you day and night and recording things and he's getting, he's getting his little files together. He's, he wants you. He's jealous. He, he don't want you getting what, what he was supposed to get. All right, it's time for the Lord, the last three and a half years, to just, God just cast him out of heaven. There had to be a fight. He didn't go uh, easy. Him and his angels. One third, I believe, of all the angels in heaven. That's a lot of and demonic, angelic beings coming the last three and a half years before Jesus returns to earth to wipe them all out. Okay. But they're going to suffer. And they suffer actually for eternity. So I shouldn't say wipe them all out. They're going to suffer for eternity. Those who take the mark of the beast will suffer for eternity. Unsaved people who don't take the mark will not suffer for eternity. But they're going to have their part. They're going to be taken to the torturers for torture. And a lot of it will be based on how forgiving are you when people do you wrong. Remember that. But I want you to see here in Revelation 12 verse 11. It's extremely important. In this one verse. You are told the key to how to overcome the devil and his angels. Once they are cast to earth. How do you overcome them? Lots of prayer. Flee to the big oak tree. What does he say? How do you overcome the devil? You overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. What does that mean? Well, we're told in Revelation 2 verse 4, the method of killing. Remember, the devil, for these last three and a half years, are given the authority to kill you by Father himself. Why would Father do that? Well, he's doing it. We're told in Zechariah 13, it says it's a test. It's a test. In other words, Father, who loves to give out rewards, we see in Revelation 19 and 20, he's given out a special reward to those who are willing to die rather than deny Jesus the Messiah, just like Jesus died for us. In other words, a certain percentage of the people in Father's household need to be ones who were willing to die for Jesus. I say again, there has to be enough, a certain percentage, who are willing to die for Jesus as he died for us. You don't have to die for Jesus to be saved, but a certain minimum percentage has to be beheaded by Lucifer himself or his uh, angels who are going to be taken over people's bodies. All right, the people who um, make up his army, his Muslim jihad. You've got to look him in the eye, tell him, testify why you will not worship him. If you're not looking the devil in his face, well, look his army in the face as they got the knife at your throat. Let me tell you why I'm not going to take that mark of the beast. Why I'm not going to wear that mark on my hand, my forehead, or that oath around my wrist or forearm, or, or put that headband on around my head saying there's no other God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, or whatever that decree is, whatever that oath is. Let me tell you why I'm not going to do that. It's because I know who the real Messiah is, and he's coming in just a few days. Okay, that's what you're going to tell them. You'll probably break out in speaking in tongues. Yes, you're going to testify to the ends of the world because you're going to be on YouTube. You think I'm kidding? The word is going to get out like never before. Because, why? Because a certain percentage of Christians 
are going to be beheaded and they're going to give a testimony and God will make sure your testimony is seen around the world to the Buddhists, to the Muslims, to the Hindus, to the atheists. This testify, this speaking in tongues, and they're going to hear it in their own language, it's going to be amazing. Do you get Father's plan? That you are going to be the way he gets the word out to the ends of the earth when Lucifer is here. Isn't Father's plan wonderful? All right. Now how do I know there's got to be a minimum number of beheadings? How do I know that? Where's that at in Scripture? Well, turn to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 10, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until, 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 are you listening? Both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed who would be killed as they were was completed the number of those who would be killed as they were the ones crying out under the other uh, souls under the altar they're crying out why because they've been beheaded they've been beheaded for their faith and they said how much longer do Christians Lord have to put up with the devil being here on earth beheading all the Christians. That's what they're saying. How much longer? And he tells them, there is a number. See it right there? Verse 11. There's a minimum number of beheadings that must take place. It must be completed. The number must be completed. How do I know it's beheadings? Maybe it's just a sword to your gut. You know, how do I know it's a beheading? And believe me, I get no pleasure out of this. Go to Revelation 20, verse 4. It tells you the method of killing these Christians must endure to get this message out in the last days. Do you see it? Oh, it would help if I turned to the right page. Revelation 20, verse 4, right here. And I saw thrones, and they, the twelve disciples, sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So beheadings is the method that Lucifer and his angels and his army are going to use to kill a minimum number of Christians. Well, what happens when the minimum number is completed? We read about there in Revelation 6, 11, and 12. What happens when that minimum number has been reached? Is that minimum number reached on the last day of the age when the last three and a half years of the 70th week has been completed which is the seventh bowl is that when that minimum number is reached and Jesus returns no the minimum number is reached turn to Daniel chapter 7 and you will learn when the minimum number is reached What am I doing? Daniel chapter 7. Here we go. Between Ezekiel and Hosea. Daniel chapter 7. I'm trying to think and turn pages at the same time. All right. Here's where we learn what happens when the minimum number of Christians deny Lucifer and his army to their face, even with the sword at the back of their neck. They're about to have their heads sawed off. This is what happens when the minimum number is completed. Read all of Daniel 7. We're not going to do it now. But, here we go. Let's read verse 21 of Daniel 7. And I was watching, this is Daniel, watching this vision. And the same horn, that's the Antichrist, was making war against the saints, the Christians, or any, you know, anyone who says Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. And prevailing against them, meaning he's killing them, 
God ain't doing nothing about it. He's slaying them. And he keeps slaying them and keeps slaying them until the Ancient of Days Father came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And then the time comes later for the saints to possess the kingdom when the enemy's no longer in the land. Then you can plant your flag and you have the uh, thousand year reign of Jesus ruling from Jerusalem. So the judgment is made in favor of the saints when that minimum number is completed. When does that happen? That is the seventh trumpet blast. You read about in Daniel 11. You read about it in Daniel 14. You read about it at the end of Revelation 16. You read about it in Revelation 19. Okay, that is the seventh trumpet blast. Excuse me, Revelation 19 is the seventh bowl, the last day of the seventh trumpet period. Didn't want to confuse you there. The seventh trumpet lasts for 45 days. You have 45 days of these seven bowls of wrath. The final bowl is Jesus' return. It's a 24-hour battle, the great day of God Almighty, up there on that storm cloud. See my other videos. How do we know it's a 45-day period? Well, the end of Dan the book of Daniel, the, the last few verses of the book of Daniel, tell you it's a 45-day period. That's when the time comes to possess the kingdom. The time come is 45 days according to the end of Daniel 12. Why does it take 45 days after the judgment has been made in favor of the saints? Because you got to get the tares and the wheat, the bad and the good, to the threshing floor in Israel for the great battle, the battle of the great day of God Almighty. It's a seventh bowl. Okay, how do we want to end this lesson? 70 times 7. Uh... We looked at what? Matthew, Daniel 9, Daniel 7, Hosea 6, 2. We looked at Revelation chapter 12. Um, well, we, this lesson is about uh, paying for your sins and having Jesus wash away your sins so you don't have to make payment to Father. I wanted to show you Revelation 20. Turn there to end the lesson. Remember I said that uh, well I said that if you don't take the mark of the beast you will be tortured for whatever your part is and then your soul will be destroyed like it never existed but you won't suffer forever. Well, here in verse uh, Revelation 21, verse 8, it says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Remember Matthew 18. Jesus is going to base this degree of torture on how forgiving are you. So when you're there before the great white throne, begging father to forgive you did you show mercy to people who did you wrong well you did father wrong you know if you were a very forgiving person even though you never came to the realization who Jesus was your part in this fire may not be too long maybe a few seconds I don't know I can't say for sure but if you take the mark of the beast the last three and a half years when um, uh, when the Lucifer comes there with his angels, if you take that mark and worship Lucifer, you will suffer in the lake of fire as long as they do. Right here in uh, Revelation 20 verse 10, it tells you how long Lucifer and the Antichrist and the false prophet, how long they suffer. forever and ever and ever. Now the devil's going to be bound up. He's not going to start suffering until after the thousand years. But the Antichrist and the false prophet humans are going to start their suffering at the end of the 70th week. 
and then the devil is going to join them and they're going to suffer forever and ever and ever and there's other scriptures in Revelation I'm trying to remember where they're at that says uh, well you can look right here Revelation 19:20. then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet okay it's the Antichrist and the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image these two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with fire and brimstone okay but yeah there's other scriptures it says that those who take the mark will be tortured forever I'm trying to remember where that's at I believe I found it Let's see. well anyways it's there in Revelation uh, let's end this by going back to Micah 4 let's go to Micah chapter 4 have you ever read the book of Micah you need to it's all about the last days Micah 4 okay, here we go this is the day that Jesus returns on the last day of that 70th week this is it the seventh bowl the book of Revelation chapter 16 this is it okay it tells you who is actually going to be fighting against the Muslim Jihad on the last great uh, battle the battle of the great day of God Almighty doesn't name the Christian nations that are going to show up there it doesn't name them but it does tell you that Israel is pretty much going to be dead there's not going to be a lot of people left alive in Israel you know you'll have tens of thousands but you're not going to have hundreds of thousands or millions left alive in Israel why because well, read Zechariah 13 and 14. But they will come back to life in glorified bodies. You see it right here in verse 13 of Micah 4. All right? Uh, verse, the, the previous verse, verses 11 and 12, tell you why the bowls of wrath need to take 45 days. You read about it in Matthew chapter 20. Uh, of course, you read about it in Revelation 16, but it needs to take 45 days because we got to gather them to the threshing floor. Did you catch that? We've got to gather the remaining nations that need to be threshed to the threshing floor, which is the Valley of Armageddon. And then what happens when they're all gathered in place? When the sixth bowl is finished and all the nations who Father has desired to be there? will be there and it's time to thresh who will thresh the resurrected Jewish people and the resurrected Christians will arise come back from the dead just like how the book of Daniel ends Daniel you will arise to your inheritance on day 1335 from the abomination of desolation that is the seventh bowl Israel and the Christians will arise from come back to life and they will thresh these nations O daughter of Zion for I will make your horn iron and I will make your hooves bronze all this is a meaning that uh, nobody can defeat them when they're in their glorified bodies you shall beat in pieces many peoples many nations I will consecrate their gain to the Lord okay so that's how it's all gonna end so brothers and sisters Sorry that it was a long lesson, but I hope you got a better understanding uh, of what is meant by 70 times 7. It doesn't mean just always forgive. Every verse in Scripture gives you a clue, a golden nugget, about the last days, the 70th week. Did you know that? Everything is information that you can use during the 70th week of and of course the last half of the 70th week is when uh, Lucifer comes to earth in person with his angels and takes over the body of the Antichrist King when does the Antichrist show up on the scene when he's crowned at the first seal okay getting kinda of deep that's Daniel 11 verse 21 how many days are left until Jesus returns once the Antichrist is crowned King at the first seal and he comes in peaceably gets crowned 
2,300 days between the first seal and the seventh bowl when Jesus returns and the daughter of Zion arises from the dead and threshes at the valley of Armageddon. Brothers and sisters, I hope it's been a blessing to you. I can't wait to see you next time. God.